Hi everybody, my name is Rich Hollenberg. I'm a proud Newhouse graduate, class of 1993, which seems like forever ago, and I'm coming up on my 20th anniversary of graduating here. I have spent almost my entire career post-Syracuse in television in some way, shape, or form, and currently for the last three years. I'm a sportscaster doing play-by-play -play for college basketball and studio work for ESPNU. So Rich, when you were a student here at Newhouse, did you see yourself doing this? I mean, is this kind of like Rich's boyhood dream? To <laughs> it, it really is. I, I knew that I wanted to be a sportscaster from about 13 years old on. That was right about the time where I realized I wasn't going to be a professional athlete in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I kind of hit that ceiling early enough, like a lot of us do, and said the next best thing to being on the court is being next to the court. And so in some way, shape, or form, I've been chasing that dream ever since. We have so many students who, who look at your video, who see the work you do on ESPN, who see the work of other sportscasters, who say, that is exactly what I want to do. I mean, it sounds cliche to even ask, but how did you do it? I mean, what were the keys to your success? Syracuse definitely was, and I know that sounds cliche, but Syracuse definitely was. I came here with that goal in mind. That's why I chose to come to Syracuse. Um, and from back in, then, I knew the Bob Costases and the Dick Stocktons and the Marv Alberts of the world all went through these doors. And I said, that's a pretty good company to be in, and that's where I want to be too. So I came here with a very single-minded focus, although I left here with a much broader focus of what it is to be in this business. I thought, like so many people do, I want to be an ESPN Sports Center anchor. And it was pretty soon after I realized my first job in television outside of graduation that that was exactly what I didn't want to do. With all due respect to Sports Center anchors, I think it's terrific, but I wanted to be more part of the action than talking about the action. Uh, away from the actual court or the field or you name it. So uh, while Syracuse gave me the building blocks for sure and I knew that coming in, uh, the experience at Syracuse and being able to go to the Carrier Dome and watch the football and basketball and lacrosse games and things like that really broadened my horizons and opened my eyes to there's not one single job that I was chasing after. It was really just being in this industry that was my dream. What's it like for you to come back to Syracuse to call games Oh, now? it's the best. It's the best. I, I, it's the one time that I have a really hard time wearing or not wearing my emotion on my sleeves. I was up here, I had the great good fortune of being put on the Midnight Madness telecast for ESPN this past September. And luckily, because it was uh, broadcast on ESPN3, which is their internet property, they said, have at, have fun. Talk about the fact that you graduated and things that you remember being a fan here. And I was able to do that. Now, I'm calling a game, uh, a, a regular season basketball game here. I'm going to have to dial that down just a little bit and be a little more unbiased. But it's still a thrill. The, the most important thing you need for this job that I do, I believe, is passion. And I'm going to be passionate about a game here, just like I would be in any other college basketball venue. But it always means a little bit more when you're back home in Syracuse. Talk to me about the role networking has played in, in what you've done and what you've been able to accomplish. I think at times you, you may have even taken jobs that really weren't up Rich's alley, but it was all about meeting people and, and getting those opportunities, right? Yeah, that's a great question because that's the one thing I would tell everybody right now as you know, a dumb college kid myself 20 years ago. I didn't really even consider networking as something on my radar, let alone something that was so valuable. But my career path did take a, a, a fairly divergent path from most people, from away from sports where I started, and now luckily three years ago back into it full time. And once I decided that I wanted to get back into it full time a few years ago, I said, how do I do that? I, I can't just rest on my resume and a resume reel. Uh, everybody has a resume and a resume reel. And it was then that I realized the power of networking. And it wasn't just networking with Syracuse alum and, and people in the business who went to Syracuse, but that was definitely the most important part. I reached out to people who I didn't even know, except for the fact that I knew they went to Syracuse. And they welcomed me, whether it was with a phone conversation, email, or in person, they welcomed me with open arms like we were long lost friends. And those are the relationships that now I realize are really, really germane to maintain and develop even as you grow. Even when you think I've made it, I'm where I want to be, 
still the most important thing has to be continuing to develop and foster relationships within the industry that you're in and sometimes even without it because you never know where your career is going to lead. When you see young talent, what, what is it that sets them apart from all those other resume tapes? And, you know, what is it about the people who succeed that that's why they succeed? What do you think when you see that? When I, when I built my own website, which really, when I built it, it was just a marketing tool, like a lot of websites are for people in our business, uh, I said, how do I want to define myself? How do I want to brand myself? And I came up with the three Ps, passionate, prepared, professional. And those are the three things I, I know I need to bring every day to my job in order to continue to grow, continue to get better, and quite honestly, to continue to get noticed so that I'll move up the chain of whatever chain I'm trying to move up. So I mentioned it before, passion is number one. If you're not in it because you love it, then find something that you love and you'll do better at it. You have to be prepared, especially in this sport. I tell people ESPN could easily be called the big boy network. They don't coach you, they don't pat you on the back, they expect you to come in prepared to do your job and do it well. And if you continue to do that, the right people are going to notice. And the third thing, like I said, is professionalism. Especially in this day and age, you have to worry about social networking much more than I did 20 years ago when it didn't even exist. But you have to carry a professional air to you in whatever you do. Whether you're talking to the sports information directors or the head coaches or even the players, um, and certainly inside the workspace, in the office or the studio, wherever you work, you have to be professional. You have to carry yourself with a demeanor that is friendly, but also businesslike. And those are the three tenets I live by, passionate, prepared, professional. Fantastic. Rich Hallenberg, thank you so much thank for you. sharing your story with us. Great.